Well set up nation after six months of no baseball. It is opening day this week. Shota Imanaga is ready to make history at Wrigley Field. Justin Seal looks like he's on track for opening day. And we have a few more roster moves to make before that first game in Texas. Let's talk about all that plus so much more here on the Setup Man podcast. Welcome in Setup Nation and you're going to <clears throat> hear me do that a few times uh today because I'm getting over this gnarly cough. Seems like it's going around. Seems like everyone I'm talking to is dealing with some sort of cough, congestion. <sighs> so, sorry for any noises that come out of this mouth today that you aren't expecting. But I want to first of all thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. Uh this is actually going to be a regular show every single Monday, we're going to do a weekly recap during the season. And then Thursday, we're going to do kind of a midweek recap that's going to be a little bit more YouTube friendly, a little bit of highlights, reactions, uh, analysis from the game. So Mondays, expect to see this weekly recap. Thursdays during the season, expect to see a little bit more YouTube friendly uh, midweek recap. And we are also going to have our very first live reaction game on April 10th against the Padres. Now, what can you expect for that? First of all, definitely put it down on your calendar. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to do the whole game or maybe just like the middle innings, but what we're going to be doing there is you get to kind of join me. You get to experience the game with me, and I'm going to be watching the game with you live on YouTube, and you'll get to just kind of hang out with me. Put in the comments what you think that strike was, or was it a ball? And what was that play about? What's council thinking? You know, we get to kind of hang out together and experience the game together. Plus, I'll be giving it a unique perspective on a lot of different things, different stats, different uh, in the dugout, in the media box kind of perspective because I've been there. Uh, I haven't been in, in the dugouts per se, but I've been in the media box. And so for me, I would love to provide that perspective and just hang out and watch Cubs games, right? Like that's what we've been waiting freaking six months for. So I am super excited that we are finally there. It's time. And if you're not subscribed already, you're going to want to make sure that you are, because if you are not subscribed and not hitting that notification bell after you subscribe, then you won't be alerted when we do have those types of things going on, new content, the, uh, reaction games, any of that that we schedule, anything that we get ready for. If you are not set up for your notifications, then you're not going to get that uh, on YouTube. But also make sure that you are subscribed to our list, setupman.net. Right there on the homepage, you'll be uh, encouraged to sign up for our list, and I'll be sending out emails and reminders about that as well, as well as these weekly recap videos too. Um Fun note before we get started, uh, put just dropped my daughter off for daycare, her very first day at daycare. You've seen a photo of this here. Uh, very fun dad moment today. Also a little bit of a sad dad moment as I have a quiet household right now. My wife is at, back at work for the first time. My daughter's at daycare. Uh, this is this is interesting. All right, so I get to bring you more content. You guys out there, Setup Nation, Cubs fans. I'm going to bring you more content because we got a quiet household. At least two days a week we do. And last update, Andre Dawson jersey. Y'all have been waiting, and Garrett Cooper is officially signed. Well, not signed, but he's officially been announced that the signing, the minor league signing, has turned into a major league signing because he has made the opening day roster. So for those of you that were holding out for Garrett Cooper or for the Andre Dawson jersey, I'm so sorry to have to tell you, that is not being given away. Remember, my wager was this. Before Cody Bellinger was signed, I said the Cubs will make two more signings for Major League players before opening day. So Cody Bellinger was signed. Garrett Cooper at the time was signed to a minor league deal, but that has now turned into a Major League deal. So that is the second MLB player signing that the Cubs have made here before the season. And so had that not happened, well someone would have been the winner of our lucky Jersey for Andre Dawson uh, autograph, but guess what? Good news. All these balls behind me right over here. Plus so many more. I've got about another 15 sitting to my right here. All of those baseballs are going to be given away this season. So if you are subscribed, if you're checking in, you are going to get opportunities to win so much more. And maybe I'll get bold again and uh, put up my Andre Dawson one as a wager. All right. With that being said, let's get into the show here. Justin Steele. Whew. Can we all just take a breath 
of a sigh of relief, a breath of fresh air, man, that it's so ground ball right against the giants the other day hits Justin Steele in the knee. He goes to the ground. It looks like he's in massive amounts of pain. Left knee contusion is what they called it. About an hour or so after he was taken out of the game, he had a good sense of humor and said on Twitter, X, excuse me, uh, I'm okay, my bracket isn't, right? Basically saying, I'm okay, y'all chill out, or y'all can breathe now, but my bracket still sucks, right? So great to see that he's got some sense of humor about it. It sounds like he's going to be just fine. You just have to wonder now, is he going to be limited to like, 75 80 pitches or maybe four to five innings rather than six plus innings at 90 to 100 pitches i'm not sure it's a long season all right we we are going into a long season that really opening day even though we put so much pressure on it right we put so much pressure on opening day it really doesn't mean a whole lot the cubs beat the brewers the last two years of opening day and still did not make the playoffs right we think that opening day means so much but it really means nothing at all so if Justin Seale only goes three innings and those are three shutout innings or three one run ball innings and gets taken out because they're just being precautious. Oh, well, right. That's kind of where I stand on it. Let me know in the comments. What do you think? Do you think that Justin Steele should still be stretched out to five, six innings, AKA 80, 90 plus pitches? Or do you think that the Cubs should still treat it like maybe his last outing of spring training where he's limited to more like 60 to 70 pitches? Let me know. And speaking of opening day, how about this 2025 opening day? We're not even in 2024 yet, but the league has already announced that the Cubs and the Dodgers will open up the season in 2025 in Japan. Uh, you know, I, I can't remember the last time the Cubs did an overseas opening day. I want to say it was man back when I was a kid against the Mets. I, I remember Sammy Sosa, Mike Piazza. It was like two early two thousands. That's when I, Honestly, last remembered, I could do some research. I didn't. I'm just thinking about this off the top of my head because I just think that this is a cool thing that the Cubs are going to be doing with the Dodgers. And potentially, how cool would this be if Imanaga ends up having not, not the opening day starter, but like maybe the second game ends up pitching against Yamamoto or Otani? How cool would that be for the country of Japan and the United States? I think that'd be amazing. And honestly, it kind of feels to me like that was the goal of MLB making this kind of move because there's so many Japanese players on the Dodgers and the Cubs combined. You got Suzuki, you've got Imanaga, Otani, uh, Yamamoto, and it's bringing the two together, right? So to not see Imanaga pitch in that series, I think would probably be against what the MLB is trying to do. They're trying to bring back the guys that came from Japan as a thank you of like, Hey, thanks for giving us these guys. And also keep on sending more. Man, it was, I want to say there was like five or six from overseas that came over to the MLB this year. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it just feels like there's a wave of more of these Korean and Japanese players coming over to the MLB. And by the MLB doing this, seems like they're encouraging more and more of this to happen. Now, speaking of Shota Imanaga, he is set to make Wrigley Field history. How cool is this, guys? Shota Imanaga will start the Wrigley Field home opener. First time a player in their MLB debut is the starter of the home opener at Wrigley Field. That is the first time ever. So we're not talking about a rookie making the start. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a MLB debut being the home opener at Wrigley. That's a special moment and something that Shota and Wrigley Field fans will never forget. I honestly thought Wicks was going to be the fourth starter, but maybe maybe just because of rotation, maybe because Council wanted it to be a big deal for the fans to see him in Naga first. I, I, I don't know what the reason for that is. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Who I know we put so much pressure on, like, okay, who's the first starter? Who's the second starter? Who's the third? Who's the fourth? Who's the fifth? It doesn't really matter because they all pretty much end up getting the same amount of starts throughout the season, maybe minus the fifth starter, because that seems to always be like a rotating wheel. Uh, but when you look at it, it, it feels like this was a strategic, hey, let's put Imanaga as the starter at Wrigley to start the season, the buzz, the excitement, 
I, you know, it's for sure sold out no matter what, right? The, they're not going to have any issues selling out tickets, but to now know that, Hey, I've got the Wrigley field home opener ticket and I get to see Shota Imanaga. I think that carries a little bit more excitement right now than maybe like Jordan Wicks or Javier Assad. No offense to them. They're great pitchers. They're all great pitchers, but the excitement, the newness, right? New is always better as Barney Stinson says on how I met your mother. Now with how that matches up, Steele is going to get the opener. Kyle Hendricks, it seems like will be second. It feels like Jordan Wicks will be third. None of that has actually been announced, but then Shoda and then Assad will be the first five starters. What I like about this is if you look at the schedule, it does limit the other team to seeing a like handed pitcher on back-to-back -back games. It'll be lefty, righty, lefty for each of the first two series. So steel, lefty, Hendricks, righty, Wicks, lefty, then Shota, lefty, Assad, righty, steel, lefty, if that rotation stays the same for the first two series. So that should be, you know, again, like I don't put as much emphasis on the, the matchups as a lot of people do. Unless it's again, like, you know, if it's a Hayden Wisniewski getting a start and you just know that that lineup is filled with lefties, right? You know, he hasn't proven to get out lefties. I just don't put that much of an emphasis on it until you give me a reason to say, oh, okay, well, that guy doesn't get out a certain type of hitter. Uh, but for all of these guys that are starters, it feels to me, you know, Hendricks had that one year where he was having a tough time getting out lefties, but he's kind of mitigated that. Everyone else in this starting rotation feels like they are just as good against lefties as they are against righties. Now, with that being said, let's talk about the roster. The roster is almost set. This is exciting to see. And one of the things I talked about last week was I really wanted to see the, the bullpen get a little bit more clarity, and I feel like we're there. So a few things here. Uh, Patrick Wisdom, Jamison Tyone, and it looks like Nick Madrigal as well will start on the IL. That's been all of the rumors. It, it seems like for sure Wisdom and Tyone, Nick Madrigal did play in a game yesterday, but because he hasn't get, gotten much spring action, I think he his last game that he played on before that was March 4th. And for that reason, he just probably needs a few more at-bats down in the minor league, so they'll probably start him on a rehab assignment. That's the... Looks like the for sure IL moves along with Caleb Killian, who will be taken off the 40 day man or 40 man roster because of being on the 60 day IL Ian Hap has quote unquote plateaued, which apparently when you, when you read that, right, it was like, Oh no, that's not good. Does that mean that it's going to take longer than expected? Well, apparently that doesn't always mean a bad thing. Uh, Bleacher nation had a good article about this. It just basically means that he got to a certain point. And that point was good enough to play. And then there wasn't really any continued progress beyond that. So it sounds to me when I read between the lines about that, it sounds like he's like 99% the way there. So he's just, he's pretty much good enough to play. They just would have liked to see him at maybe a hundred percent. So because of that, it sounds like he's not going to miss opening day. Will he be in the starting lineup? We'll see. Will he be the starting DH that day? We'll see. Now that there's Talkman and likely Canario on this roster, you're going to have some outfield depth. So he doesn't have to be the starting left fielder for that first series. Carl Edwards did not make the cut. This was a little bit of a sad moment for me because you think about Carl Edwards, he was in the last inning of the 2016 World Series, and you wanted to see him make some sort of comeback with the Cubs. He had a good year last year. Like He's going to end up on a major league team, but this bullpen picture is so compacted that it made sense that he was one of the guys that was the odd man out. But Garrett Cooper, 33-year-old first baseman, he does make the roster. Very impressive spring training so far eight for 29 with three home runs that comes out to an OPS just North of a thousand. I'm fine with it. Uh, I don't want it to be another Trey Mancini slash Eric Hosmer situation. He is a little up there in age 33, but he did have a decent season 251 batting average, 17 home runs for the Marlins. Nothing to write home about nothing crazy, but the reason I'm fine with it, Michael Bush, he's a left-handed hitting first baseman. Now you have a right-handed hitting first base baseman as well. Cooper's 6'5". Okay, Bush is only six foot. 
that's been one of the worries for me as a six foot first baseman. Is that a big enough target? So there's, there's some things for me as a fan. I look at this and I say, okay, well, at least it gives Michael Bush a little bit more of runway to feel comfortable. Not all the pressure is on him. He can start five out of seven days and Cooper gets two starts per week. And then if, Bush just takes off. Okay. Now he's got all seven starts for the week. Or if Cooper starts to take off and Bush isn't doing so well, now you flip flop that maybe Cooper gets four starts. Bush only gets three, uh, bring him in there against the lefty. He hits lefties really, really well. So we've yet to see much about Bush. Can Michael Bush handle lefties? If he can't, then this move makes even more sense. So I'm okay with it. Uh, I, I know a while back a couple weeks ago, I said, something effective like the Cubs will be serious this year. They'll show that they're serious if they don't let Peralta or Dom Smith or Garrett Cooper make the roster. But as you kind of look at this move, like if they if they let Peralta make the roster and now Peralta is even a, either an outfielder or first baseman, I'm not I'm not down for that. Now you're just log jamming the outfield and and moving Bush out of an opportunity for first base. Dom Smith kind of the same thing. They're both left-handed hitting uh, guys that are past their prime where Cooper, he, I, I wouldn't necessarily say he's past his prime. He hasn't even had a major league career enough to be able to say what was his prime. Um, he's kind of a late developing guy. So for me, I'm okay with this righty lefty, get a chance to have a bigger target over at first base, give Bush a little bit more comfort. So how does this shape up the rest of the roster? Well, you'll see in front of you right now, the five starting pitchers, Steele, Hendricks, Assad, and Monaga Wicks, that's set. The starting nine, the most common starting nine, is likely to be Happ in left, Bellinger in center, Suzuki in right, got Morel at third, Swanson at short, Horner at second, Bush at first, Gomes as the catcher, and for now I'm putting Talkman as the DH. The four bench, what feels like guarantees to me, are Amaya, Mastroboni, Cooper, and the reason I say what seem like it are Canario. Canario is not been said that he's made the team yet but with wisdom and madrigal on the il who else would be on the bench there if you look at the roster right now it's down to 30 guys including some of the il guys i don't see anyone else being on the bench and i don't see the cubs only carrying a three-man bench that's just not deep enough four men is usually your typical bench the five bullpen guarantees i would say right now are alzale smiley naris Merriweather and lighter. I say smiley, especially just because of the contract and the lack of options. I don't see them DFAing him, especially after showing that he was a legitimate bullpen guy last year towards the stretch. And then the three bullpen spots that are up for grabs between four guys are Yancey Almonte, Luke Little, Jose Quas, and Hayden Wisniewski. Now the, the two men that this to me really comes down to is Luke Little and Hayden Wisniewski. They both have the least amount of major league experience between the four. Almonte, although he's coming off of a bad season, uh, is a quote unquote vet. Luke Little is not. He has thrown six and two thirds innings in his entire career. And Wisniewski is coming off of a season where there was a lot of high expectations for him as a starter. He ended up getting demoted to the bullpen and had flashes of brilliance, but still continues to struggle to get out lefties. This spring has not been great. Meanwhile, Luke Little has just looked like an unstoppable force. If you ask me today who my money is on, my money is on Luke Little making the team over Hayden Wisniewski. And that's based on both performance and demand. The demand is there. If Drew Smiley is your only lefty out of the bullpen, that's not a true lefty. I would actually rather have Hector Neris or Al or Al Leiter, Mark Leiter Jr. pitching against lefties than Smiley. I absolutely 100% 999 times out of a thousand want Luke Little against lefties. Have you guys watched him this spring? I texted Luke the other day. I'm like, dude, it looks like you're throwing 110 miles an hour. Like he is, the ball is exploding out of his hands. He's that herky jerky motion. It's tough to pick up. He's so tall. I believe six, eight or six, nine, that 97 mile an hour fastball probably feels like 110 to most. And then you just bury that dirty sweeper, man. I mean, I, I don't see how, and I go back to this. 
If the Cubs are serious about winning, I don't see how Luke Little does not make this team and stay up with the team all season long, barring any injuries. All right, so that's my vote. Who would you like to see? Would you rather... So again, assuming that Almonte and Quas are a part of this up for grabs, who are the three that you would like to see between Almonte, Luke Little, Quas, and Hayden Wisniewski? Pick three of those, put them in the comments. Let's hear it. All right, some rumors here. Uh, there is a rumor going around, and it seems to be that Brennan Davis is not at Cubs camp right now, which is really interesting. Uh, we had Brennan Davis on the show while I was out there at spring training. Brennan is poised to have a breakout season. He's healthy. He looked great in his at-bats. He got hit in the head, of course, because the guy just has like the worst luck in the world, and then he ended up getting uh, put on the – concussion precautions and then came back and was starting to hit again. But now suddenly after being demoted to minor league camp, he's not around. So the question is, where is Brennan? And according to bleed cubby blue, great articles on there. If you have not seen them, he believes that there might be a trade in the, the works for Brennan, which kind of, you know, I, I think a few things about this. Number one, I don't want to give up on the guy so quickly, but also we have so much outfield talent coming up. The way that Owen Casey was swinging it all spring makes me, if I'm being honest, way more excited about Owen Casey coming up than Brennan Davis just because of the showed uh, consistency in not getting injured, the progression in his game, right? He hasn't struck out a whole lot this spring. Whereas last year, the strikeout rate was up over 30%. The ability to make some adjustments. He just feels like a guy that is poised to come up to this team and make a huge impact. I'm not saying Brennan Davis is not, but that's what he has up against him. You've got PCA, you've got Canario, you've got Casey. There's, I don't think Alcantara makes it up this year, but this is the competition that Brennan has on top of that. The three guys are already there and Hap, Suzuki, and Bellinger, not to mention Talkman as well. So it's just a longer road for a guy like Brennan Davis to be able to have an opportunity with the Cubs where if the Cubs can trade him right now, get some value, probably some starting pitching depth is what my guess would be, and let him go to a place that he can actually get some playing time. I think we all want to see the best for each player. I think David Bodie, same thing goes for him. We'd like to see him in a place that he can actually get some playing time because both those guys, to be honest, deserve to be on a major league team. I think they've proven enough to know that they should be on a major league team. So that's one rumor. Let me, again, let me know in the comments. What do you think? Do you think that the Cubs should still give Davis a opportunity or is there just no room for him on this team? All right, that's going to do it for the recaps, but let's get to our dunce cap and all of our moments of the week. Now, this has nothing to do with the Cubs, but I think the dunce cap of the week is pretty obvious, and it is the Shohei Otani gambling rumors. Uh, I'm not being quick to place judgment. A lot of the writers out there are saying don't be quick to place judgment. However, you have to look at the writing on the wall. And if you're not aware of this story yet, just go Google it. There's so many videos and articles and things out there. But the long story short is that Shohei said, yes, I was trying to bail out my buddy, his interpreter, who's been his best friend for a long time. I was trying to bail him out from a large gambling debt. And then the lawyers got involved and it became, no, this is illegal gambling. I had no idea about it. This was being stolen from my account. All right. So the the where my mind goes on that is a couple things. One, let's say it was stolen. Let's say it actually did happen. Okay. Shohei seems to be an incredibly forgiving and nice guy. Maybe he says to his friend, listen, we're gonna part ways, but I'm gonna tell everyone that I was just giving you money back for a loan. What the translator didn't tell him was that it was illegal gambling. Oh no, I didn't know that. Well, I, I just told the media something. Now I I need to retract my statement and I need to tell them the truth. Sorry, Ipe. Uh, it's either Ippy or Ippe. Uh, you got to deal with this, right? That's assuming that it was stolen. If it wasn't stolen, right, which feels to me like that's the case. If it wasn't stolen, you have Shohei not really realizing that 
the type of gambling was going to put him in hot water. And that's why he said, I was just trying to bail out a friend. And then he realized, oh my gosh, the type of gambling is going to actually get me in hot water. And now we got to throw my buddy under the bus. And now his buddy is saying, Hey, listen, you got a lot more to, to live for than I do. Right. Or we could all, I, both of those could be wrong. And he could actually be having this, this gambling problem, which would just shock me because of all of his angels teammates saying like, we never would have seen this coming. I know Shohei is extremely private, but I feel like at some point when you have a gambling addiction, that would show that just feels to me like any sort of addiction when you're $4.5 million in debt from a gambling thing, that's an addiction. That's an addiction. And that, and that's the kind of stuff that's hard to, to hide. It's bad for baseball. It's bad for Shohei. It's bad for the Dodgers being a Cubs fan. I think we all want to see things go bad for the Dodgers, but not in this way, not in this way. Uh, I, I would like to see Shohei not get in trouble for this. And hopefully because he's not meant to get in trouble, not because things are hidden. We'll see what happens. All right. The fly, the W moment of the week, 16 and three, 13, 16 and 13 during the spring with minimal injuries. Again, who cares about the record during the spring, but as long as it's not alarmingly bad or if it's alarmingly good, then you get pretty excited. But just as long as it's not alarmingly bad, then you're good. I actually, even as I say that, I think the Cardinals had the best spring training record last year. And then look at how last year ended up for them. So just a moderate 16 and 13 record. I'll take that for month one here in April. Uh, and, but the bigger thing is the minimal injuries last year. You had the Suzuki thing, which ended up being a lot more minimal than we thought it was going to be. We thought that might last a month. Luckily it only lasted about a week and a half into the season. Now you're looking at the most major injury being Tyone, which now Craig Council is saying we're expecting to see him back probably around the second or third week of April, which would be great. And you have a sod in the meantime, so not a huge issue. And then the feel-good moment of the week. Opening day is almost here. The 2024 Revenge Tour is here. All right, Cubs completely flopped in September last year. You feel like there is unfinished business and now March 28th against the Rangers at 6 p.m. Central the Cubs will start their season in Texas I I am stoked uh, especially with me starting this channel this will be the first season that we're live and so I'm just excited to experience the season with all of you to be in the community and the Cubs community and the setup man community this is going to be a blast and I cannot wait to see what this team does here in 2024. And speaking of that, coming up, once again, just a reminder, Mondays, we will have this weekly recap. Thursdays, we're going to have a more YouTube-friendly type of midweek recap. And then our first live reaction game will be April 10th against the Padres. Come hang out with me. Enjoy the game with me right here on YouTube. It'll be a live broadcast. I'll keep on promoting that uh, and letting you know when we're going to be doing that. But put it in your calendars now because that's going to be a blast. And we're also going to have a giveaway. Anytime I do one of those live reactions, always going to be a giveaway. All right, guys, that's going to do it right now for me on the Setup Man podcast. I'm going to go put my arm on ice. We'll see you on opening day.